This is VOA News. Reporting by remote, I'm David Byrd. International pressure mounted on the military in Sudan Wednesday, one day after it ousted the transitional government in the Northeast African nation. Members of the UN Security Council denounced the coup, warning that it threatens to destabilize one of Africa's unstable regions. Richard M. Mills, Jr. is the U.S. Deputy Representative to the UN. This contravenes the constitutional declaration and the democratic aspirations of the Sudanese people and is utterly unacceptable. As we have said repeatedly, any changes to the transitional government by force in Khartoum puts at risk U.S. assistance. Relatives and activists say Sudanese security forces detained three prominent pro-democracy figures overnight. Protests denouncing the takeover continued on Wednesday. The United States is working on hypersonic weapon technologies after the top U.S. military officer, General Mark Milley, said China conducted a very concerning test of such a weapon system as part of its aggressive advance in space and military technologies. John Kirby is the Pentagon spokesman. Our own pursuit of uh, hypersonic capabilities uh, is is real. Um, it's tangible, and 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 we are absolutely working uh, towards being able to develop that capability. Milley was the first Pentagon official to confirm on the record the nature of a test this year by the Chinese military that the Financial Times reported was a nuclear-capable hypersonic weapon that was launched into space and orbited the Earth before re-entering the atmosphere and gliding toward its target in China. For more on these stories and the rest of the day's news, visit our website. This is VOA News. U.S. President Joe Biden has announced the United States will explore with partners the development of an Indo-Pacific economic framework. While the White House did not release further details, it said in a statement the framework would define our shared objectives around trade facilitation, standards for the digital chain resiliency, and other areas of shared interest. While no address concerns that the U.S. is lagging behind China in regional trade ties. The White House released the statement following Biden's participation in a virtual East Asia summit, which plunged the United States back into regional diplomacy after a four-year U.S. presidential absence. New Mexico authorities said Wednesday they have recovered a lead projectile believed to have been fired from a gun used in a fatal movie set shooting. We get more from AP's Margie Saraleta. Santa Fe County Sheriff Adam Mendoza says testing is underway to determine whether the projectile taken from director Joel Souza's shoulder is the same one that killed cinematographer Galena Hutchins. Mendoza says investigators are examining two other guns that were recovered from the set, as well as 500 rounds of ammunition. We suspect that there was other live rounds that were found on the set. I won't comment further on how they got there. Mendoza says there is no film footage of the incident. Santa Fe District Attorney Mary Carmack Altuis says it's too soon to say whether charges will be filed. I'm Margie Zaraleta. Iran said Wednesday it would resume talks with world powers about its nuclear program by the end of November. Iranian Deputy Foreign Minister Ali Bagheri, who serves as Tehran's chief nuclear negotiator, wrote on Twitter, we agree to start negotiations before the end of November. Exact date would be announced in the course of the next week. At the White House, Press Secretary Jen Psaki said the Iranians have made similar comments over the last several days, adding that Washington would leave it up to the Europeans and our negotiators to determine when the next step would be. The EU and the world powers have been hard-pressed to get negotiations restarted since the election of a hardline president in Tehran. Former U.S. President Donald Trump pulled the United States out of the deal in 2018 and reimposed economic sanctions against Iran. On Wall Street, stocks faded in the last hour and closed in negative territory. The Dow Jones Industrials lost 0.74 percent. The S&P fell by 0.51 percent. The Nasdaq was unchanged. Reporting by remote, I'm David Byrd, VOA.